with another edition. It's me. <laughs> it's me. It's that M A double T. I'm riding with me always. It's huge pop. Scott T. What's going on, guys? What's going on? I was rocking out to that song. That is a hell of a theme song. That Thank you fun. again, Husky, for making that. That's actually but that's version two. That's version one. I gotta step it up. I gotta say this, Husky. Uh Matt. We got we had August Artois on the show last night. We played that entrance theme. The first thing he said after he was after I did the introduction, he goes, first of all, he goes, that entrance music is badass. Good job, guys. So we got compliments from wrestlers. This is that's some great music. And um oh by the way, we're gonna be talking NBA. And if you come into the chat, you better have a comment and that better not suck or you get ran off here. That's just me. Scotty. So I think today I think we're gonna focus on NBA All Star Weekend. So whatever Matt has in store, um, go take it away, boss. Well, again, it's NBA All Star Weekend. It's the only part of the regular season that I really give a shit about. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. Fair. Uh I mean, the Pistons are horrible, so. Sure. But, uh, and the NBA All-Star Weekend used to be Saturday night. We have the slam dunk, the, the, th- the three-point contest. Sure. Um, yeah, at one time they had the Legends game. Yep. Uh, then they made that into the rookies versus sophomore game, yep. which was always a fun one, too, because it gave the guys that weren't good enough to be on the All-Star team, but... Anyway, um, we had All Star Weekend was always the fun one because of we see we saw the All Stars, we saw the guys compete. Uh, Kobe Bryant won a slam dunk contest. Um, 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 we saw, we saw, I'm sorry, we saw Kobe, we saw Vince Carter in the slam dunk contest. We've seen, um, Michael Jordan competing in the all-star game and the slam dunk contest. Uh, you saw Sean Kemp do it. You saw, you just saw all these different all-stars compete in the different, Larry Bird won multiple three-point contests. It, it was fun and it was more bragging rights like i am what's up cody k fab what's going on my bro you saw the you saw the all-stars all weekend long it wasn't just them sitting and watching and enjoy and eating popcorn right, right. it was it was an event and it showcased everybody it showcased the all-stars and that's what i don't like about now it's now it's I I guess I understand why people like watching it now because of being able to see the rising stars, the guys who maybe you don't know, like last year's slam dunk champion Mac McClung. I've known about I've known him about him for a while because he's been on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. But Mac McClung goes and wins an All Star out of the out of the G League, if I'm not mistaken, last year. Yes, he did. Um, so really, uh, they got the all-star game on Saturday. No, that's Sunday. They got the NBA all-star. It's, East, it's West and East. They're finally going back. Did they finally go back to East and West? Yeah. I, well, they still, I don't, I don't know. Cause a couple years ago, they started doing that stupid draft where LeBron well, James know. had a team and somebody else had a team. Giannis like, had a team or. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I mean, that's, I mean. I don't win the event on an NBA, but this is getting kind of – it's kind of ridiculous now that what they're doing. I don't. It's just we have the in 10 games into the season tournament. We have a all-star game that's been so much more Hollywood 
incorporated than anything else. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's near, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to watch stuff like that. And I think Matt and I could agree on that, especially the slam dunk contest. After you, when you grew up, when you grew up in the era where we watched the slam dunk contest, Matt, you had the guys like the Jordans, like the Dominique Wilkins, like the Spud Webs, like the uh, Dr. J's and everything like that. And they've done all those crazy ass dunks. And now you got these people trying to be creative as hell, jumping over cars, jumping over people. And it's like, I guess, but it's kind of difficult to watch a slam dunk contest lately. But last year's slam dunk contest, I think, revived the NBA slam dunk contest. So I am looking at um, the All Star. Dad, thank you. Um. Good afternoon, Dad. Hope you're having a great day. Um, the, the NBA All Star Game is it's back to East and West because uh, the starters for the East is Giannis, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Halliburton, Damian Lillard, and Jason Tatum. Um, and then for the West, we have Luca, Kevin Durant. Um, Alexander, LeBron James, and uh, Jokic with Devin. Uh, the West clearly has a better team. I think. The West yeah. is ridiculous. Um, is Curry on that team on the West? Hold on. So I'm going to go down the whole Eastern the whole Eastern roster right now. So yeah, Jonas, Joel Embiid, Tal... Tyrese Halliburton, Damon Lillard, Jason uh, Tatum. And the reserves for that game is Bam Adebayo from Miami, Paolo Branchero from Orlando, Scotty Barnes from Toronto, Jalen Brown from Boston, Jalen Brunson from the Knicks, Tyrese Maxey from the Sixers, Donovan Mitchell from the Cavaliers, Julius Randle from the Knicks, and Trey Young from the Atlanta Hawks. Surprise, surprise, no Detroit Pistons. All right. Oh. <laughs> Win the game. <laughs> and uh, so for the West, we have Luca, okay. Kevin Durant, Shy, Jalarius Alexander. Someone's going to just absolutely get after me for butchering that <laughs> name, but I don't really care. Uh, LeBron James. Uh, Nikolai Jokic, Devin Booker coming off the bench, Seth Curry coming off the bench, Anthony Davis off the bench, Anthony Edwards off the bench, Paul George off the bench, Kawhi Leonard off the bench, and Carl Anthony Towns all coming off the bench. If they yeah. don't win, if the West don't win by 50, there's a problem. It, it should be an absolute blowout. Um, Let's see. I'm I'm looking for uh, the All Stars uh, Saturday night. Um, to see who's doing what. Um, let's see here, we got uh, Saturday. We have uh, the the Kia Skills Challenge. That is one that I do enjoy. Yes. So Dad posted up here. Um... The girl from Purdue, uh, Purdue or Iowa? Iowa. That the girl, girl from is, Iowa. Man. Caitlin Clark is dirty. Did you see where she dirty. shot? Dirty. Did, did you see where she shot that ball from? That yes. uh, to break the record. She in the in the po the pre post game interview said, "I called a logo shot for my last shot for my to break the record." Who? I mean, no other buddy else but Steph Curry calls logo shots. That was Steph Curry esque. She pulled up, she drained it, and it was over. I'm like, come on. With the first pick in the NBA draft, the Detroit Pistons select yes. Caitlin Clark. Yes. Iowa. Absolutely. <laughs> I'd be I'd be behind that on a hundred percent. Um Team Pacers, uh <laughs> Tyrese Halliburton, Benedict uh Matherin, and Miles Turner. Team top picks. Paolo Brancho, Anthony Edwards, Victor uh, 
that big old dude from San Antonio. I can't pronounce his name. Scotty Barnes, Tyrese Maxey, and Trey Young are for Team All Stars uh, in the Skill Challenge. Um, the three, the starry three point contest. Uh, Malik Beasley from the Bucks, Jalen Brunson from the Knicks, Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton's on the All Star team, and he's in two events that night. So take note, fellas. Take note. He'll be your MVP of the All Star game. You watch. Uh, Damian Lillard playing uh, in the three point contest. Uh, Lori Marketin from the Jazz is in it. Donovan Mitchell from the Cavaliers. Carl Anthony Towns, a center. Okay. Okay. Out there, and Trey Young is also. And Damian Lillard is the defending three point contest champion. So he's in it. Trey Young, he's a. I, I'd be my pick. Trey, as a dark horse, I'd be Trey Young. Uh, and then we got the Steven versus Sabrina three point challenge. What? It's basically Stephen Curry going. Um, Stefan versus uh, Sabrina will follow standard starry three-point contest rules. Four ball racks with four game balls and one money ball. F- fifth rack will be a special all money ball rack. Steven versus Sabrina can decide the spot for this rack. Two starry ranges, range shots, shot values. One, uh, the starry range uh, shot is worth three points. Stefan will shoot from the NBA line with NBA basketballs. Um, Sabrina will shoot from the WNBA line with WNBA basketballs. Okay. So that's that. And then the slam dunk, the AT&T slam dunk contest. It's been the AT&T slam dunk contest since I could remember. Um, Very back. Uh, let's see here. We have... Uh, for uh, I'll wait until Scott gets back to uh, talk about talk more about the the competitors of the slam dunk contest, uh, and then we're gonna get into so, something that we prepared for you, for everyone. Um, I put together a top ten list for top ten all time best slam dunk contest or slam dunks in a slam dunk contest, and I hope you guys enjoy the highlights that we're gonna throw out there to you. Um, so again, hope everyone's having a great Friday. It's a, uh, it's kind of a dead period in, uh, in sports at this point. We're waiting for baseball to start up. Uh, we have basketball and hockey going, um, just in the, as far as the hot, as, as far as, uh, We'll venture away from basketball just for a second to run down the standings in uh, in the NHL. Uh, Detroit kind of slipping as far as getting a wild card spot. Uh, they're still in the second spot um, with Toronto, so it's they're they're kind of they're trying to they're trying to get up there. Uh, they're in. Uh, yeah, they're no, they're number two in the in the uh, wild card spot for that one. Um, but back to the back to the NBA All Star Slam Dunk Contest. Jalen Brown from Boston is one of the competitors, and he made. I'm pretty sure he's on that All Star team too. So he we have one All Star. Jamie Jacquez Jr. for the Miami Heat. Again, if you're I don't know that guy. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough to really get behind somebody in this one. Jacob Toppin. Okay. <laughs> Who? And last year, your reigning defending NBA slam dunk contest winner Mac McClung is back, and uh, he will be participating in his second to defend his title. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about the all-star slam dunk contest for this reason, because I, I brought clips people. I brought clips, uh, at the top 10 and I'm going to throw, throw number 10 up to start with 
Yeah. And then we'll talk about it. So here we go. I like the way they dribble up and down the court Just like I'm the king on the microphone So it's Dr. J and Moses Malone I like slam dunks and taking it to the hoop My favorite play is the alley Ooh, I like the pick and roll I like the giving Sean Kemp at number 10 Yes, sir The Rain Man Sean Kemp I mean, the guy was 6'10 and athletic as hell Yes, sir that I perfect number ten, I think. Yeah, yeah, I loved what he did. I think you know he was, you know, everybody wanted to mimic probably one of the best dunkers in the league, Michael Jordan. I love that picture that you found, that slide that you found where he was. Oh, uh, he was about three feet past the free throw line, but it's a solid attempt to do a Michael Jordan free throw dunk. So, but he could hang in the air like no other. So. Sean Kemp was one of the most thunderous dunkers. Yes. It was, and he, dun- he, he, for being how big he was, he still jumped out of the building. Yeah. Um, number nine. Give me go, because it's basketball, but Mr. Kutch is low. Now, is that, in your opinion, number nine out of the top? Is that, so did you rank him in the top that you thought was the best? Yeah, I thought that he had, okay, out of overall dunks, that was my number nine like of all time favorite dunks that came through the slam dunk contest. He only, I mean, okay, but I will say this. There was no one better than Dominique when it came to the windmill. Yeah, no so- one touched no right, one and, touches in window. And I'm, I, I say that. I ask that question, Matt, because I, in my opinion, growing up, and of course, it's all about who you grew up watching, right? I grew up watching Dominique, and I grew up watching Jordan, and I grew up watching that feud, you know, those guys going at each other. I I have a hard time. I, I need to see what you got below that because Dominique was the boss, man. He Dominique and Jordan had one of the best dunk competitions and i'm like to see him at number nine is kind of shocking to me but i'll i'll wait to see if i would bring him more based on what you got at number h21 so all right here we go with number eight it go because it's basketball but mr Curtis Now, the clip that I wanted, I couldn't find it. Before he took off on for that dunk, Reebok had those Reebok pumps, right? And he <laughs> bends over and he and he does and he pumps up. It's all about showmanship, right? So yeah. D Brown's no the ultimate dab, really. I mean, he yeah. was dabbing before dabbing was cool. Yeah. 
that's why he slides in at number eight. I just that that dunk when when I think ninety slam dunk contest, I think D Brown. Yeah. I no, but I, you're won. you're right. I wish you would have found that pumping up the shoes. That was again, Matt said it. Showmanship, right? Yeah. That's what this is about. It's stuff that we don't get a chance to see in the games, you know, growing up. But man, that when he pumped up, the crowd went nuts when he was pumping his shoes up. So I remember that was pretty sick. And in that highlight, you had you had the all star. D Brown wasn't an all star, but he had an all star cast. I mean, down when he liked it, he was standing there talking to Magic, and hey, yeah. they loved it. Right. And I was just say, watch as we go through this video, the videos as the as the as you get into the early or recent years, I love the fan interaction. I love the, how off these guys go running down the court going, ah, you know? So yeah, watch the reaction, but that reaction with Dominique and magic, man, that was something else. Coming in at number seven. Go, Cause it's basketball. Uh, Mr. Kirch is low. of that on my wall <laughs> growing up as now, kid, man. <laughs> Bud Webb came in at seven, but all three of them came in at seven. The, I couldn't find the best Bud Webb dunk. Those three right there was just a testament on how how electric that guy was. Yeah. He was good in a regular game, too. He was a good point guard. Not, you know... The best point guard, but he was a damn good point guard. And shit, five foot what? Two? Five maybe? seven. Five, five seven, seven can get up that high? Yeah. I give props to him. <laughs> Pogo sticks for legs. Yes. Now, who was the other guy? What, Muggsy Bogues, right? Muggsy Bogues was five three. Five three. That boy can play too, so. Coming in at six. We it go, cause it's basketball. But Mr. Kirch is low. So this is why I say, why did you put Dominique at number nine and this clown at number six? Harold Miner, okay. his whole, like his whole, that whole slam dunk contest was ridiculous. He brought back the slam dunk contest. Yeah, he did. They called him Baby Jordan. He did stuff. His, the only other person that could beat Dominique's windmill is Harold Miner. Yeah. And Harold Miner's hands were so small. Like, he had to cradle the ball. He he wasn't able to palm the ball. He had to cradle it when he did his dunks. I don't know. I Harold Miner was was always one of my favorites. He was the modern. He was that generation's Dominique. Yeah. And did you notice, again, we talked about it at the end of that one, the number seven, the the uh, athletes' reactions. Here's Isaiah Thomas going. It's done. That's it. Yeah, I mean, he was he's throwing up the ten all day. <laughs> yeah, throw the ten up, y'all. So, yeah. So number five. This is where we are right here. Is that five? And that was four. I like 
and dribble up and down the court Just like I'm the king on the microphone So it's Dr. J and Moses Malone I like slam dunks and takes me to the home My favorite play is the alley Ooh, I like the pick and roll I like the give and go Cause it's giving Showmanship It comes down to showmanship Dan Marley comes out and just He, he, ties, he, he puts the blindfold on him, Cedric Sabalos Cedric Spallow takes that big whew, and takes off. You either A, you're going to make it, or you're going to look like a total asshole doing it. <laughs> you have two choices. You're going to either do it and make it, or you better know where you're going, or you're going to look like a total dumbass and miss. And he didn't. He looked like amazing. You know, yeah. That's, so. my, that's the number five. Again, it's showmanship. It's the doing that extra little bit to pump up the crowd and and just be be creative. Number four. Number four, the most recent one out of out of them all. It's aged extremely well. Yes, but I just couldn't put it higher than four. And notice again, now now transitioning from the eighties and nineties fans or the athletes or NBA players now to I don't know how many years ago that was, but you notice that was two thousand sixteen. We're not wearing suits anymore. We're in whatever the f- you want to wear to a, to a game, you know. Well, so. those are celebrities. Those weren't even the players. Yeah, so celebs. I mean, even that back in the eighties, you see celebrities in like suits. Now you're seeing celebrities in whatever they want to wear. And yeah, hey, you know what's up? Coming in at four, three, three. Yeah. Oh yeah, three. Way to dribble up and down the court, just like I'm the king on the microphone. So it's Dr. J and Moses Malone. I like slam dunks and takes me to the that was some shitty ass editing by Mr. Scott here. Sorry, the East Bay Funk Donk. It ain't the shoes that that, si- that sign said. It ain't the shoes. Man, I remember watching that. And I remember, I don't know if Matt ever did this when he was a kid, but you ever go out there in your, in your driveway basketball hoop after watching the slam dunk contest, trying to do the move somehow. I went outside and I tried to go through my legs and do a layup. I finally mastered it after about a thousand times. Oh, that was that was my go-to to finish people off in horse. Yes. Yeah. You know? Under the legs. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. I mean, we had when I was a kid, we had the, we had those uh, certain. Some of my friends, I didn't have the ability to do this, but some of my friends had those uh, um, hoops that you could raise and lower. Yes. Yep. And we, we would we, we no we didn't we had to go to those friends' house to do this. But we used to have slam dunk contests, like go between the legs and that kind of stuff. That's that's where watching all these all these uh like the, the slam dunk contests and that 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 gives you the that gives you the creative to go out and do that kind of stuff. 
Right. Man, what we had was the little wire rim that hooked on the back of your, your door at the sponge ball or, the, you know. But, Mel, to be honest, and I thank Dad for this. I don't know if he's watching it or not, but our dad and mom provided what they could provide for us to have a basketball hoop. So my dad, Matt's dad, we went out and bought a big, I think it's eight by some, a, a big post. Dad dug that damn hole, put the post in there, filled it with cement, and we he somehow screwed the backboard. That's what our basketball hoop was. He made sure it was 10 feet tall, though. That 10 foot tall, absolutely. If he didn't, Grandpa did. Well, that's what I'm saying. And then, of course, my, my basketball hoop was, an, was one that we bought. And I was... I was given a 10 foot by 10 foot slab yep. of concrete to play on. Yep. My fit, my 10 foot jump shot ain't no one better inside 10 feet than I am. Ain't nobody. <laughs> Promise you that. And shooting around trees, hell yes. Yeah, I, I can hit that. I can hit that shot every day of the week. Yeah, I remember right shooting around the trees or or like an angle behind the backboard. I used to be able to nail that all the time, and I'm like, so as kids we took. But I guess what I'm tra trying to say as kids we tried to take what we've seen in the um, All Star games as and try to emulate that. So, and one last story about like just we. I mean, obviously, and. All-Star Saturday night was in February. We lived in Michigan, so we weren't going out that late. But in the summertime, when I was younger, it was – we had – my my basketball hoop was set up perfect, right? Because grandma and grandpa – it was at my grandma and grandpa, our grandma and grandpa's house, and it was on the back half of their house. They slept on the opposite end of the house, which was great. I could play ball until like 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night sometimes because we had a street light that lit up the whole the whole court. It was amazing. But we would have all-star, summer all-star <laughs> games. We'd wear our jerseys and it would be a lot of fun. But it's coming down to the final two. The final two dunkers. And I'm gonna I'm gonna catch a lot of heat for this one. Coming at number two. I like the way they dribble up and down the court Just like I'm the king on the microphone So it's Dr. J Number two, Michael from the foul line <clears throat> I won't, I'm not going to comment until you play number one Number one Number one, okay, I'm just going to play number one, and again, I, I'll catch, I'll take all the heat in the world, you can, whatever. All right, I will have to apologize for my comment I made earlier, okay? I did tell Matt, what the hell are you putting Michael Jordan behind Vince Carter? I see my reason why I would put Vince Carter above Michael Jordan. I'll be, I'll, I'll be on the hater train, too, if you guys want to hate me, too. I think you're right. Let me tell you why. Go ahead. Michael Jordan sure took off from the, from the free throw line. 
I get that. Michael Jordan had to kiss the rim. I get that. But did you see that Mother Scratchers or Vince Carter's head was? What? Now, I think that's why he's a, he's a better dunker. Because this dude, if you didn't notice, his head, play that again, Matt. Play that again. I want you guys to watch where Vince Carter's head was. That's sick. Now I get that. Now, okay, now I see why you put him number one. And but to not to mention that guy, he when Vince Carter threw that down, he owned it. He knew it. And he walked with swagger. So well, and he walked away and he looked right at the camera and goes, It's over. It's yeah. over. Um, there's another dunk he had, and he only appeared in one dunk contest, and he won it, and that's the one. Uh if there's a dunk he had later on that night where he put his elbow in the rim. Yes. Um, you had, you had that one. He, the reverse 360 windmill dunk is forever going to be my favorite dunk in the NBA All Star Weekend. It there's no there there's no other. Now, audible mention. I did have I I. Just making these, like finding these clips last couple weeks to prepare for this. I came across guys like Kobe. He went between his legs. He was the youngest champion ever. That's cool. Uh, Larry Nance dunking two basketballs. I thought about it. Not so much. Larry Johnson, uh, Grandmama Larry Johnson. Dunked with authority and a lot of charisma. Just wasn't good enough for this list. I catch a lot of heat because I put Harold Miner on there because he was no one really knows who Harold Miner is. He brought the slam dunk contest back to where it was. He won he went two in a row and I think he finished in the top two both times. He won it and then finished second. I just think that my top 10 that I put up there, or put together, was what, close close to being, and I don't, I don't include Dr. J in this because his slam dunk championship and his slam dunk from the foul line was in the CBA. It was not in the NBA All-Star Weekend. So all you haters that are going to watch this and – Hate on me because, oh, well, Dr. J took a foul, foul line. Yeah, cool. <laughs> In the CBA. Or the ABA or whatever the hell. But, no, I, we talk, all those, uh, all the guys in there, they all had one thing in common. They had the swagger. They had, they, they walked on the floor knowing they were going to win the slam dunk contest. I will say this. Um, it's I love to see how it evolved, how it's evolved throughout the years. And lately, I mean, I get it. It's, you know, my problem with that nowadays is, and I think it's the fact that there's, what else can you, you have to be creative now. You have to jump over cars. You have to jump over people. You have to, take the basketball off the backboard somehow or whatever, because why? Because you, you, how do you follow a Vince Carter? How do you do a Michael Jordan? How, and they've done all those, those cool dunks that now these guys have to come up with what, you know, the creativity of the dunk. That's what it's all about. It's showmanship, creativity. Who's the one, who's the guy that uh, took off his Jersey, took off a Jersey or something and, I can't remember who that was. He had a different person's jersey on um, a couple years back. I can't remember. Was that Donovan Mitchell? 
It might have been. Did he have Larry Nance's jersey on or something like that? I can't remember. No, that was um, Larry Nance Jr. Because he, he, he... Yeah, so yeah. He took... He, his dad. In mid-stride, right? You know, take off your dad's jersey and whoa, you know, so... But yes, you got to do that now. Or you're not... Or it's not good. So... Oh, uh, yeah. I hate... Though, though, there's I hate big men in the slam dunk contest. If I'm being completely honest, um, like Dwight Howard, Superman, yeah, okay, he did. Kind of... I'm so glad, so glad Nate Robinson beat him that one year yep. by dunking over him. With yep. he, he, he had that green ball and he used it as kryptonite because it was stupid. Yep. Again. It's creativity, it's swagger, it's showmanship. Correct. If you don't bring that, I'm not interested. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. Well, we do have to just, I mean, I'm, before we go get away from the All-Star, before, I mean, we have to, Matt mentioned it, it the best sharpshooter out there in the three-point contest, it was always fun, even though I hated the guy, couldn't stand him. I was a Detroit Pistons fan, that's why I hated him. But Larry Bird, man, I, there is none other, nothing like him. Remember man. when? Remember at the end, like he 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 shot the ball and he threw up the one, and as he's walking away, and he knew yeah. it going in. It's like, yeah. God, and he did it without taking his warm up off. Yep. I'm like, dude, you are a stud. Um, and then in the nineties, uh. Remember Craig Hodges? Yes. Yep. Craig Hodges was big in the nineties uh, with the Chicago Bulls. Yep. Um, he won multiple. Yep. Um, Steve Kerr was always. Yep. Didn't our boy Dan Marley win it once? No, he was in it a couple times. He never won it. Yeah. Um, kid could shoot from the uh, bench, though, huh? Yeah, he could. <laughs> Never forget that. You know, I'm a water boy at a Alpena High School varsity basketball team, and I'm getting uh, whatever to stop to the bench. And here's this kid from Traverse City uh, High School, Traverse City Trojans. Hated them. Can't stand them. He's dribbling the ball in his chair and he, on the floor, and he rocks back. And I, I remember this forever. He rocks back and he throws that thing up. Not once, not twice, but three times in a row. And I'm like, damn. He knew he was good, you know, and then you see him go to CMU, you know, and that, that's when the toilet paper craze came through, you know. And Talking about toilet paper. <laughs> okay. Tomorrow, uh, I got to, I got to give you the, the, uh, the details of this. It's, um, tomorrow. It's, it's going to be a televised game. It's going to be on ESPN Plus. 7 o'clock tip against Western Michigan. Okay. Toilet paper toss pregame. Really? Yeah. You're going to be there? No. No. <laughs> I, have no I have no interest in being in that game. No. It's a sellout, though. It's a sellout crowd. Of course. If they, it's going to be a traditional. They're going to bring it back every year. All right. So. Awesome. Well, we are staring down the last 15 minutes of the show. Went by pretty damn quick uh, this Friday afternoon. Um, shameless plug time for us. We have a lot going on. Yes. Um. We will be gone for all of next week. Um, I don't know. Are you are you doing your show on Wednesday still? I'm going to take next week off as well, recharge the batteries a little bit. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I won't even, don't even, I mean, I hate to say this, but um, I've decided that I'm not even going to upload videos to fill spots. I've reached out to WSBN TV. Um, I said, you know, I'm taking this time to unplug and um, be with family and, Wrap back up for the uh, finish up the year. Um, Matt has a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, we're talking WrestleMania, 
13, 14, 15, and 16 when we get back? Yeah, we can uh, we we can uh, really ramp it up, and because if we're taking a week off, it's going to be kind of like jamming a lot in at once. But yeah. we're having fun doing it. So absolutely. And then we can get back on Fridays. We're going to be sports talk. Um, and yeah, you guys are everybody's welcome to come in the chat that's on here and leave a comment after if you watch it later. Read a comment. But just have a comment, and I'm going to take a phrase from Jim Rome. If you're going to have a comment, please don't suck. Have a take, don't suck. Yeah, let's go. And that's pretty much all I have for this week. It's been a pretty pretty busy week. Um, <laughs> just stay tuned, people. Big things are coming, I promise. I, yeah, not, I maybe not here, but places on this uh on our station on our channel it will you'll get it some big things will are, are gonna happen pretty damn quick yes sir and we are just matt and i bust our ass every day every week and um i want to thank a few people um let, tell me if i'm missing anybody um matt so first of all i want to thank uh husky or joe harris um uh, for creating a cool entrance music i think matt will play it before we leave I want to thank Cody Cornette, Cody Wilson, Cody, whatever the hell you want to call him. Cody Swift. Cody Swift. You can call him that too. Cody, uh, <laughs> Cody Jamama. I don't know. Whatever. Thank you, Cody, for being the background um, people. Um, thank you, Matt, for always, always, always pushing and being there. Uh, thank you, Rico, my boy, on Monday and Tuesday. Brand, uh oh. <laughs> Of course, of course, please here. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Rico. Thank you, George. Uh, thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Um, I'm missing people. Cody, I said. Taylor Swift, um, bitch. <laughs> thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Um, so, Bob, I thank you, our dad, and for always being on the show. I, I the list could go on and on. We could probably fill twelve minutes of thank you list, but um, we probably could. The, the bottom line, thank you. Um, thank you for everyone who's been on the show, um, yeah. in the last three years. Absolutely. I mean, it's not our special guests aren't just celebrities. Like, like former wrestlers, former athletes. Um, it's the people that were on Beyond the Match Season 1 that was really cool. Uh, all, all those guests that I had there, uh, all the indie wrestlers that no one knows about yet, all the people who's been on the show over the last year and a half to two years, thank you. I don't and, – and, and this is me – uh, because I don't get to talk to some of these guys. Thank you. Thank you for helping us grow what we're trying to grow. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for welcoming Taylor Swift's um, kid into the. Um, the no, no, chat. no, no. That, that, that's her. That's her lover. Her lover. I'm sorry. Thank you for allowing Taylor Swift's lover. Kelsey, I'm sorry. You got competition. The man, but the man I'm drives. I'm gonna a, get a phone call. I'm gonna get a phone call for that the one. The man drives a big truck. He okay. <laughs> Dude, right now is having an aneurysm in his truck, just screaming and like carrying on right now. Well, like, I'm good. I'm. He's going to. He's going to end me after this. Well, so. he has ten minutes. He knows how to get on this on this show. If he wants to come on and AC, you're going to be ended. Well, come on on. If you have something to say to this to our show, See, come on. Can't spell because he's so excited about <laughs> Cody. I invite you on if you have you have the opportunity, man. Just yeah, have a take and don't yell. suck. He's gonna be he's gonna yell at me after the show. Um That's okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh Hopefully soon we'll be able uh, 
uh, get a current uh, collegiate wrestler, or not collegiate wrestler, but collegiate um, uh, golfer to come on. Yes. Uh, hopefully we can nail that down. He's still in season right now. Um, we got Grant Wolfram uh, at spring training right now. Um, he is on the, he's on the spring training roster right now. I, I've been kind of following that, which is really cool. Uh, good luck to him. Hopefully he can make it, um, or at least, uh, get to the triple a, um, ball, ball club. And really that that's all I have. It's, we're not quite to that hour, but thank you guys. Yeah, I don't have any more. Um, if I had, uh, some Swifty music, I'd play it for Cody, but that's I didn't. Cool. But thank you guys again. I appreciate each and every last one of you. He's got a but he has he's got a big set if he's trying to take out Kelsey's uh, Kelsey's girlfriend. Man, you are dumb. <laughs> You're welcome, Cody. Oh, oh, okay. Hey, that, that, if that Walmart internet of his. Look, it's, he's wearing her colors. Yeah, you're wearing red. Sweet. Sweet. Swifty. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Cody? Welcome to the podcast. What brings you here in such a great mood? He's cat's got his tongue. <laughs> oh, well, well, okay. I guess he doesn't want to talk. We'll see you guys <laughs> next week. <laughs>